the sky below. He's a physician. He is an astronaut. He is an Olympic coach. And he's the only man to ever fly in space and sit atop Mount Everest. Scott Perezinski, welcome to Big 550 KTRS. Thank you, sir. Great to be with you guys. So what's harder, flying in space or, yeah. climbing, or climbing Mount Everest? <laughs> well, I, I think both have uh, their, their moments. But, uh, you know, I would say that uh, the, the pain and suffering on Mount Everest uh, far surpasses anything I've ever done. It's the, the mental but also the physical challenge on top of it. What, I mean, you've, you've led such an interesting life. You were in med school, and you woke up one day and said, I want to be an astronaut? <laughs> actually, I woke up a lot earlier than that uh, with that kind of dream. And my dad actually worked on the Apollo program when I was very young. So I had model rockets and posters on the wall and, and actually saw the Apollo 9 launch uh, when I was seven years old. And so that kind of really set the bit for me. And I always had it in the back of my mind that uh, I'd love to get a chance to, to fly in space one day. And so... I just never lost that boyhood dream. Many Which involved more training, um, climbing Mount Everest or becoming an astronaut? The, the flight training to become an astronaut is, is really, really rigorous. It takes a, a number of years. Uh, but I, you know, I, I certainly pursued uh, the, um, the training to become a mountaineer as well. I, I began climbing when I was about 15 years old. And, and uh, you know, the, the ultimate goal for any any climber is to, to take a shot at Everest, and so I was lucky to, to kind of do both of those things. The book is called The Sky Below, Dr. Scott Perzinski, and they say that this is not a traditional astronaut memoir. This is a very different book. What did you try and do with this? I really tried to share the human experience of, of all these extraordinary experiences in my life, but, but also show that to attain something, you know, really big, a, a lofty goal like this, you have to be willing to fail every once in a while. And so I, I talk very candidly about, you know, some of the failures that I've had, as well as even some of the, the life threats, that, you know, medical issues that I've had that have resulted from, you know, places that I've been and things that I've done. Um, because I think it's important. It's, it's not just about, you know, a, a, how you handle success, but how do you manage those failures along the way and, and keep on going. How honest with you were your failures? Because, I mean, you, people can fail spectacularly and not want to tell anybody about it. Uh, yeah, I, I, as I say, I, I lifted the kimono uh, and, and really, uh, uh, you know, sh shared the, um, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly. And there's not a whole lot of ugly, but, um, you know, it, it's, it's really hard to, to keep your vision, uh, you know, on your, your goal if, you're, um, if, if you get sidetracked by, uh, you know, things along the way. So um, I, I talk about, uh, you know, some struggles in, in school and even in uh, my, my training as an astronaut, but ultimately uh, um, had a, a wonderful uh, life career. Yeah. The book is called The Sky Below, getting a lot of attention, Dr. Scott Perezinski. Now, you were, you were sat in an interesting spot as well because you were a doctor as well as an astronaut, and you were John Glenn's physician when he came back after his senior citizen flight? <laughs> I, I was actually on board with him. I shared uh, outer space with my boyhood hero, John Glenn. Um, it was quite an extraordinary uh, responsibility, you know, taking care of uh, one of our American uh, greatest heroes. And, uh, you know, I, I, as I joke today, you know, if something happened to John, I might as well not come back home. You know? <laughs> but uh, at age 77, when he returned to flight and to fly on the space shuttle, he was there to help us understand the differences uh, between uh, a younger astronaut's exposure to space and, and a 77-year-old. And as you may be aware, going into space is actually like an accelerated aging process. We don't have to resist gravity. So our muscles and bones weaken and other physiologic changes happen. And so um, he was a great sport. He was a, a subject of 10 different life science experiments. And we had to draw gallons and gallons of his blood. But uh, he, he really contributed to our science. There things, things, as you say, muscles weaken because there is no gravity. Do other things take over while you're in space? So does something get, get, get stronger while your legs get weaker? Absolutely. So, you know, our, our balance system, our neurovestibular system in the inner ear really has to be tuned out and our eyes become our primary sensor. So, you know, we float up in space, of course, and so you can flip upside down and then the floor becomes your ceiling. It's, it's really kind of crazy the way your mind can just reorient and you have a, an entirely new uh, environment that you're working in. So you, you, you have to learn new ways of doing business when you're up in 
up in outer space. When people who are afraid of heights, when they get on an airplane, they're so high, they're like too high to be afraid of heights. Does that make any sense? It sort of does, yeah. And in, in fact, it's uh, um, you're in this otherworldly perspective when you're 250 miles or more above the planet. And so it's really kind of an out-of-body experience when you float out the airlock hatch and look straight down at your planet, and, and there are the Himalayas, or there's the Great Barrier Reef. It, you just can't believe that you're, you're physically there. The book is called The Sky Below. The man has done just about everything, and he's written a book to tell you all about it. Good summer.